This is a hilarious intro that only Paul and I will get. It's a great day, Paul. You want to know why? I can't wait to find out why. It's a really good day. Why? The Masters starts today. Oh. How could you forget that they had to delay it from the spring when um, NASCAR is less important? Um, the British baking show, way less important. But, you know, it's in that stratosphere of shit that doesn't matter when the whole world We're is We're now going opening uh, reservations for new co-hosts on First Ring Daily. You can email your application <laughs> to Paul at the run. <laughs> yep, I just had my network moment, you know. The sweat is running down my face. <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, you had a complete meltdown there. I don't know what happened. I... Yeah, so that's happening today because it's hilarious it in hindsight. It's clearly like not hilarious that they canceled all this stuff in uh, in May because COVID was bad. Right. Oh, oh boy, yeah, no, let me let me <laughs> like hey. hey hey yeah it's it's gotten a lot better. That's why we're doing it this well, week. Master Super Spreader event is underway. Yeah. Well, so, I assume there's no crowd, so no, there's nothing. I mean, it's it's golf. Like that's. It's, it's, well, no, I mean, there's no people there, like right. other than the golfers, yeah, yeah, other than okay. The, well, um, it's one of those sports. I think you know, social distancing can kind of happen normally. So well, that's like the nature of the game is <laughs> just yeah. not be near other people. Actually, we we invented social distancing. Thanks. Yeah. Why do you think we're up here every Sunday? Yep. So anyway, so that is happening. Um, I'll have a post up later today. I think. Um, well, you have the the comprehensive later. By, What's that? The Masters. No, not a, not a post on the Masters. On the, on the Xbox, Paul. Come on. Oh, Come on. Yeah. So get with it. The other good things that are happening. I know you've had yours for like a month, but some of us yeah. haven't. Sure. And so um, I wrote up like, so there's actually a, really a lot of little annoying things, but I think I came up with the, the perfect analogy of what the Series X is. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's a Ferrari with snow tires on it. Interesting. And what do you think is holding it back? Literally everything other than the hardware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay interesting right 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 uh, because it's a double sword of their strategy right yeah right i mean the game there's the game library is anemic there's no other way to really describe it right now right you can go get some of those games that have been optimized but even the optimized games other than something like ori which you can tell they put some effort into mm -hmm. um really just they aren't there and so call it's of duty small game by the way yeah i mean off the top of my head i i didn't understand why i had two call of duty black ops cold war icons in my thing yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that was the other what one, is, trying to figure out which one to buy. was. Well, no, I mean, but I already have it. So, I mean, I have two. Like, oh, I have yeah, two yeah, yeah. Well. So, by the way, those two games combined, one is 76-ish gigabytes, and the mm -hmm. other one is 150 or something. I mean, this is like, you know, if you had an Xbox Series S, this would be almost all of your storage. Yeah. Um, and then Ori comes in at, like, 12. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's tidy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of reminds me. Ori... It's this isn't a fair analogy, but like when you buy a PlayStation, you get I think it's Astro's Playground or whatever, which is effectively like a little playground to show off the capabilities of the controller. That's kind of what Ori feels like. It's like a visual demonstration of what the console is capable of. Um, I right literally now. brought my wife in to look at it because mm -hmm. it is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, what it reminds me of is kind of an Amiga fan back in the day is the modern equivalent of those sideways scrolling games we used to always play in the Amiga, which you know parallax scrolling where. You have different parts of the background and moving at different speeds, but it's, you know, HDR explosion of color. Yeah. And um, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful game. Yeah. You know? It's a really, it's a really good game. If, if you're listening to this and haven't played it, you absolutely should. Um, but there's other little minor things which you talked about too, especially like it's really, really fast console. But every time you turn on a game you haven't played, you've got to sit through the logos of like the developer, the publisher, the food trucks that came every Tuesday. This is and, just like, like every movie we watch. I literally yeah. just complained about this last weekend. There needs to be a moratorium on spinning animations for some company like that was cares. involved. In the, but who cares? Yeah. Uh, you get your text in the credit and you're done. I mean, yeah. please, like, we're trying to get to the thing. Yep. You so know? quick resume will eventually fix that. But again, it's waiting on titles that are going to support that, you know, holistically. Right. So we're, we're waiting on that. Um, mm -hmm. There's another, there's a really odd, at least a software bug that's impacting some of the stuff I do. So mm -hmm. I tried to uh, record, I got to figure out how to get it off the console. So you can change the recording settings. So like when you share content. So you can jack it all the way up to 4K HDR. So like the grand poobah of like screen sharing clips or whatever. But whenever I do that now, my audio cuts out 
while it's trying to process that clip while I'm playing. Oh, interesting. So like it does it on the console. Yeah, so it's like it's taxing the system trying to process that clip. Now, it only lasts like 15 seconds or so, but like when you're playing Call of Duty, like it's not like completely off, but it's like yeah, it's scratchy. Like a 15 second break or whatever in the middle of a game. <laughs> yeah, know, just, I don't yeah. know if you're aware of what's going on, but people are trying to kill you. And then yeah. the other thing too, which it, it prompted something on the screen and I just ignored it, which is my own fault. Um, when you save clips at that capacity, it doesn't send them, I believe, to your phone or you can't like yeah. get them remotely. So I've got to go and figure out how to like upload that think, from the console to OneDrive. Yeah, I think they're only on the console. I haven't done that. I haven't done what you're describing. I've only I've I've let the record left the recording settings at the default, but I think when you bump it up to the 4K HDR thing, um they might only be on the console. They might not even go up into Xbox storage because Yeah, no no they don't. I, yeah. Okay. So I've got to figure out how to get those off so I can try to play with them and and have some fun with that stuff. You should try the Xbox app on Windows 10, the one you have to download. No? Nope. Oh, I, I, uh, no I mean, that's what I looked for the, this morning. Also a companion app? No? Nope. So. Yeah. Would you... Because the one you download on your computer, it says, look on Xbox Live. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. There's got to be a way. Um, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, okay. the console's fast. Like that's the important thing is that the the hardware is all there. Um, the dynamic backgrounds are is, is there's only one, isn't there? I one dynamic background or whatever they call it. They look like. Oh, I didn't even I. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. So it it's a really good console. It just it's waiting for all the the rest of the stuff to kind of show up for the party, and then it'll be great. Yeah. Obviously, if Microsoft could somehow have gotten Halo to ship with the console, yes. that might have given them enough of a splash that we wouldn't be complaining so much about the software situation. Or even but, a Forza or like quite literally like any yeah, big first part, like a, a anything, Gear 6, I something. I know. it's they, they have been planning this for years. It's bizarre that they weren't you know more ready for it. But well, so, you know, they talk about optimized games, but these are yeah. like... It's like, you know, Gears 5 is back and it has new stuff in it. And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I played that last year. Um, great. No, what I, I, know, it's, it's, what I bet has happened, and, and this is probably very plausible, is that when they were getting ready to launch this console, because remember, this conversation probably took place three years ago, something like yeah. that. They said, launch day, we're going to have Halo Infinite, and then we're going to have a cadence every 10 months of a, a new first party title coming out. And that was their their strategy, and like, yes, that looks great um, on paper. And then we know what happened. I, the New York Times and probably elsewhere have done interviews with people at Microsoft or have written articles about the kind of background of this stuff. I think Dina wrote something, mm -hmm. possibly for Bloomberg as well. But I don't remember the exact source of this. But somebody basically came around and said, "Look, you know, we had to change everything um, because of the pandemic," and which is reasonable. And yep. one of the issues there is game developers that would go into an office and have access to incredible equipment have a laptop at home and that just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so at some point they basically opened the doors and said, all right, just take everything you need. Tell us if you need more, we'll send it to your house. And, um, I think that delayed things a little bit. I'm not trying to give uh, halo or anybody else an excuse, but it is an exceptional year. And sure. I'm sure, I'm sure that was part of it, but man, they still showed up in whenever that was August and showed that piece of crap off. Mm -hmm. And like I keep saying, I thought it was going to be a wizard of Oz moment where it explodes into something nice. And it just stayed there, and I was like, "What?" Is yeah, it? you know, I it my God, it looked like a previous gen title. Like, it was really bad. So, anyways, that post will go up um, later today. But if you've listened, so what to is this? this? So like a review or a no? I just uh, called it the first twenty four because I've had the console oh, for yeah. twenty four hours. I and I linked to your full review because you did a comprehensive you review. Your own stuff, it's fine. I, I, yeah. It's important to get more perspectives. I mean, yep. I that's exactly how I wrote it. Yeah, I do my own stuff, whatever, but. Um, yeah, you just mentioned about a bunch of stuff I don't even look at. So yeah, well, there and because there's also the disadvantage of what some people don't realize when you get um, a, a, an early review unit like you did, um, yeah. very very frequently, almost all the time, especially with Surface Duo, you have uh, software that isn't the final version, so you're reviewing on things that aren't. You know, you might not complain about, for example, the screen recording stuff because like ah, it's you know this isn't the final version hopefully it's fixed and you just don't know what happens until you get right. that final version so 
Yeah, I um, yeah, and they told us, you know, there were a couple of things like uh, for the review. I originally intended to highlight a certain game, which I I, I guess I can say now it doesn't matter, but it's Dirt Five, and I thought it looked great, sounded great, you know, was great. And then mm-hmm. I I took all the I took uh, you know, screenshots and stuff, and uh, I I think 24 hours earlier before the review went up, they were like, hey, don't write about Dirt. <laughs> it was like what? It was like that was the game I was going to highlight because to me it was the one kind of, you know, new game and sure. whatever. And I was like, OK. And then uh, same thing. They, I I had written back, you know, this is probably a week or 10 days earlier. And I'd said, hey, um, I'm having a, whatever this problem is. And I was basically told what we would prefer for you to do is not even use it and then wait until like two days before the review embargo and then um, – Set it up then because that's that's going to be a truer look at what the first day experience is going to be. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? I can't do that. So I did end up resetting the Xbox Series S right ahead of the embargo just to see if anything had changed. And not, nothing changed that I could tell. Um, you know, And that was the one I used to take pictures of or whatever. But So, yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, you know, the situation is fluid, I guess, you know, yep. ahead of a release. But. Um, yeah, I just, it, it's, this is a tough one because, you know, this came up yesterday with Leo. It's like, well, why would anyone spend $500 on a console right now when there are no new games and, mm-hmm. you know, very few, uh, optimized games. And it's like, look, this is a special year. I mean, people are freaking out. They've been stuck at home for eight months. We've been spending more money than ever on video games. It's gonna be the best year ever for the video game industry ever. Yep. It's no doubt about it. And, um, I don't see any reason that doesn't continue through the holidays. I mean, people feel People haven't gone on vacation. You know, they feel like they need to treat themselves a little bit. Um, and, yeah, I mean, this is one of those ways. It's like, oh, I'm going to be stuck at home, so why why wouldn't I buy the best entertainment device I can buy? You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, if you don't need a new TV. I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean, ideally, you might get both. I mean, um, yeah, that's the other thing. So you have uh, your TV, or the, whatever you're using mm-hmm. with this Console's 120 frames a second, right? Yeah, it's the... I mean, that alone is uh, very interesting. Yep. You know? But again, the only game that supports it, at least up until tomorrow, is yeah, Ori. Yeah. Which, don't get me wrong, like you can tell there's a difference between the lower frame rates of the older console, but I think right. the bigger benefit is going to be tomorrow when I get my hands on the new Call of Duty at 120 frames per second because a first-person shooter... Actually, that, isn't that today? I thought it was tomorrow. I think it's the 13th. I think it launches like tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific time, which is... I want to play... When is it? <laughs> when is it? I thought it was tomorrow. <laughs> Pre-order now. Hmm. Well, I you mean, think like, that depending on where November you are in the world, it could technically be tonight, but... Okay. It is November 12th. I don't know what time, though. But like you get, When I disappear from the internet, that's how you're going to know it's <laughs> out. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious. Like, that's one I'm going to test that game across the th- three consoles the mm-hmm. uh, the two Series X and S's, and then the uh, the One X. I just want to see how they kind of line up, you know? Yep. And then the other big thing, only because we've recommended the service multiple times and I still use it uh, weekly at least, is Google mm-hmm. Photos, which is a great right. service, which previously, up until whenever this announcement was, you could dump anything you wanted in there for free. Yeah. For as long as you want it. Um, but that's going to come to an end, uh, I think, in June of 2021. So, yeah, but so a couple of caveats mm-hmm. to that are uh, asterisks or whatever. Um, if anything you put in there already that was under their previous policy will stay there forever for free. Like you don't have to worry about it. So if you have, if you want to use Google Photos and you should, it's still the best photo service out there uh, for backing up phone photos, et cetera. Um, it, upload now. Why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, also, uh, this is for just so people. I probably just don't understand this. You, you've got two choices when you upload to Google Photos. One is original quality, which is not the default, and that's whatever the file size, the megapixels, whatever. The original photo literally goes up into the service. That counts against your storage. But they also have this high quality mode, which I don't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say it will downsize a photo to 16 megapixels if it's not less than that already. Most photos are under 16 megapixels, guys. Like most phones today still have like 12 megapixel cameras. So for most people, high quality was literally infinite, un, you know, free storage. Um, so everything you put up there is going to continue to be free. And then after that, photos uploaded to the service on non-pixel phones because those will still be, have free access. 
um, you'll get 15 gigabytes of storage for free. 15 gigabytes of storage for free is a lot of storage. It's still a lot of storage. And um, I, I've always used the original uh, upload setting on all of my phones. I, I, I literally have a lifetime of photos up there. All of my photos have been scanned in. They're all in Google Photos. And it wasn't until this past year that I had to start paying for any storage. <laughs> so I actually, I'm, as of, you know, whatever, it's three, four months ago, I, I actually do pay for storage on Google Photos. Of course I do. These are, these are memories. Mm -hmm. Like, this is important. And uh, there, I also feel like they're being very reasonable for people who are over the storage limit or uh, people have not accessed their account. They're going to give you two years. And all you got to do is sign into your account and look at Google Photos and you're good for another two years. So I, I, there's a lot of outrage out there over this. And I, I understand the whole Google cancels services issue, but I, they're not getting rid of Google Photos, folks. Like this is not this is a core service. Speaking of core services, my condensate pump just kicked on. So if anybody just heard that little bit of feedback, I, I did not. Well, that's good. That's good because it. I good thing the camera wasn't on me because I think I just jumped out of my pants. Um, because it's <laughs> <laughs> like I'm sitting here listening to you, and this thing comes on, and it's because my furnace is right here, and then the furnace generates moisture or whatever, and it drains down into this little area, and then um, it, the condensate pump turns on and pushes the water over to my sump, and then eventually the sump kicks it out to the street. But it's a it, it's it's, quite a process. Is this something that was invented by the Egyptians back in the day? They, uh, <laughs> it was slightly less expensive than putting an aqueduct in my house. Yeah, yeah. Or like a moat. Is that right? So. Anyways, here we are. Yet again, just another podcast. What is today? Thursday the 12th? It's... Yep. So your Xbox article, the first one, will be about today, you said? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. written and done. I need to go proofread it and make sure all the spelling errors get to the front page so people can email me nice things about all the errors. And then, uh, By the way, fun fact about the Xbox packaging. Mm -hmm. um, I'm starting to see the same materials used in PCs. Like when I get stuff from HP or Dell, the internal packaging is that weird new form of um, cardboard, which is probably biodegradable, right? Mm -hmm. It's probably recycled and... If it got rained on, it would disappear or something, right? So it, this is starting to be very common. Uh, but Chris Capicella contacted me on uh, Twitter the other day, and he said, hey, one like, kind of a fun fact about the the packaging. And you've seen this. It's kind of a weird thing. Like you you kind of lift the box open, yeah, and yeah. it almost yep. butterflies out or something. Mm -hmm. um, that That's an accessibility feature. It's designed so that people with physical oh. Uh, oh, that handicaps. makes sense. Yeah, can get into it without, you know, because it's not all blister packed and mm -hmm. it just opens, just opens right up and it kind of exposes itself, if you will. And then you can, the console just lifts right out and there's one little thing with the other stuff in it and that's it. That's yeah. the whole deal. Yeah, because previously you typically just open like the top of the box and then you have to reach in there and pull it out yeah. and it'd be the styrofoam. Yeah, but. Well, it's like uh, you ever buy like a microwave or a dishwasher or something and, and like the instructions are like, okay, uh, cut a line on this thing and then yeah, yeah. Uh, flip it over upside down, take that thing off and then flip it back and then lift the box. <laughs> like it's like this uh, unbelievable process to get something out of a box. And if you think about how it works, you've seen it now. Like the, um, it's the simple. You, you literally just it just flips open and you just there it is. It's out. Yeah, you know, it's it, nice. this is one of those times. Not one of those times, but this is a perfect example of where I think adding that accessibility in made the unboxing experience even better because like you open it up and like I initially described yep. it as like opening up like a high end watch box because it's like so, a presented. Yeah, that's a that's a good point because um, there are uh, see. I, I take exception when accessibility is just blindly added to everything because it's like, well, accessibility is always good. And it's like, eh, you know, but honestly, there are cases where accessibility does make things better for everybody and uh, or for almost, you know, for the majority of people or whatever. And this is a great example of that um, where, yes, they might have done this for people with certain disabilities or whatever, but. That that experience is literally better. Think about it. It's Christmas morning. You like rip it through the thing, mm -hmm. and you know you just want to get it out. And if you're too much of a spaz by the time you get to the box, you know you could screw something up and like drop it on the floor or something. And the way this is set up is like it's it's you know you're going to open it correctly. It's nice. It's just yeah, you know, a little side, a little fun but, fact. Fun, you know, just a tidbit. Take fact. The, take the tortilla of life and dip it in the queso of fun fact. The PS5 is a taco and the Xbox box is a taco. <laughs>